Artists on Main Street was a program funded through the Department of Commerce. It allowed for us to hold a workshop with local artists and then fund their programs and projects to create a more vibrant Main Street. It started off with a creative placemaking workshop in which we saw 22 artists come together to share ideas, tour our downtown, and figure out ways to create vibrancy and increase foot traffic. Through Artists on Main Street, we were able to fund five local artists to bring their idea and art project alive on Bowman's Main Street. Throughout this year, we've already seen two fully completed and a couple more that will be completed in 2022. Here's a look at some of those artists today. My name is Marie Snavely. Right now, basically, I paint in acrylic. I started being an artist probably five minutes after I was born. I think I always had that urge to paint, to make, to do, if you want me to give you a timeline. I painted my very first painting of horses when I was 17 years old. It was highly realistic. I was too poor to even have artist material, so I painted it on insulation board and I used house paint. I always looked at painting as problem solving and I would set up a problem for myself and then I would try to master it. My father, he always encouraged me from the time I was little and that really uh, kept me going. There's an urge in all human beings and everybody likes to make something. We live in a physical world and because we're in this physical world, we want to manipulate the elements of that world. Now some people build cars and they're making something. Some people design lamps and they're making something. So this creative urge comes out in lots of different ways. And then you want to hone that skill. You want to encourage that. And you want to see what they can do. Because once people are given permission to be creative, they will do remarkable things. The Artist in Maine program is an interesting concept. I think that Pullman's Main Street has wonderful potential. I think that there are nice buildings on Main Street, and I think with a few murals and some artwork and some sculpture, I think that it could be as pretty as any town. And I do believe that if people tell you that it doesn't matter how it looks, they're lying to you. I think sometimes people don't even know that they are, they are hungry for beauty, but I know that beauty is really important. You have six seconds to make an impression. That's all you have. And someone coming into our town is either going to be impressed or look the other way. So what can we do to catch those people? I'll tell you why I decided that I wanted to do the Badlands painting. They're going to build this multi-million dollar library in Medora. I've always thought that Bowman could be the place between the Black Hills and Medora. And I've always thought that we should stop the tourists here. And I think we should market ourselves as the gateway to the Badlands, the gateway to the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And I think that our whole town could have lots of influences about the Badlands. If you go 15 or 20 miles west here in Bowman County, you can see the Badlands. We are part of the Badlands. And I th thought that painting a mural on the side of the library would be excellent because you could see it from Main Street. People always ask me this, how long did it take you to paint that painting or that painting or that painting? And my answer is always the same. It took 50 years for me to get to this point. Since I'm retired, I don't believe that anybody should work more than four hours a day. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking that I will start in the morning. I'm thinking I will put in about four hours. I don't work very quickly. I'm going to start when the weather warms up. I'm going to work in just regular house paint. I have a vision in my head what I want to do and I'm going to work toward that. I don't require it, but if they want to watch me, they certainly are welcome. When I got my master's in art education, Sarah was 16 or 17 years old. And when I came home, I taught her everything that I had learned in the master's program. That was great fun for me, and she was a willing participant in that. She was very, very interested. And Sarah's always loved art, and from the time she was two, she lived it. She breathed it because we lived it, we dreamed it, we were doing it. And because of our interest in art, we've had a unique 
connection that I don't know if all mothers and daughters have because we are each other's critics and it's not competitive. I stopped doing clay because that is Sarah's field and she doesn't paint because that's my field. And so we have great respect for each other's creativity. It's just who we are. She was my earliest art teacher, of course, that I remember drawing on the sidewalk and she came up to me, she critiqued my drawing <laughs> and she said, this is good and this is good and if you do this, this will convey your idea better and more forcefully, but she was my first art teacher. And the other thing is that she made it possible to make art. I never had anybody tell me that making wasn't valid, ever. And then my dad was like that too. They were really instrumental in surrounding me with creative people. And there's my mother who's 75 years old who says like, I wanna paint a mural on the side of a building, but she's gonna do it. Nothing's gonna stop her. Somebody asked me like, when do I remember first making artwork? And I remember growing up and making artwork like, Breakfast. My name is Sarah Snavely and I have been an artist since 1997. I make artwork of animals out of ceramics, so it's out of clay. I have a degree in printmaking, not in ceramics at all. I fire everything in a kiln. I work in my backyard. I started my art practice in 1997. So my brother told me, there's this thing, it's called the internet and you're gonna want to figure out how to use it. You need to get a domain name and you need to get a website so that people can buy your work all over the world. I snuck into the NDSU Computer Lab and bought myself a domain name. Dogart.com, that was me. And got on an email list called the Greyhound L. And I started saying like, I make this Greyhound work and I make this work. And people were like, I love Greyhounds. I will buy your work, but I learned pretty quickly what I was capable of selling and the things that I needed to just make for myself. And I started doing things like art fairs, I did dog shows, I did dog specialty shows. I One year I drove to Boston, did a show in Boston, and then drove out to Southern Utah and did the show the next weekend and do stuff like that. And you have people who come up to you and say, oh my God, you're Sarah Snavely. My favorite thing about creating is to see the thing that it just exists in my imagination. I want to make things that I don't normally see in everyday life. I don't know how to be any other way. It's communication. And my way of communicating is making things and then seeing people's responses to the things that I make. Artist on Main Street program. Favorite part is just sharing the work. When I made these little bison, and I've probably made 400 of them, I'm sure. The original intent of them was to hide them and to have people find them. And that influenced how they were made and their shape. I kind of wanted them to look like little rocks or little natural elements. And that Artist on Main Street program, I have had that, that idea that I was gonna hide these guys for years and years and years. And the beautiful thing about the Artists on Main Street program is that that was the reason to do it. Like there was no more waiting, it had to be done. Plus I loved the excitement. I like sharing the work. I like how community members found that work, got excited about it, had a good time on Main Street, and hopefully they looked at Main Street in a little different way. I think that we know intrinsically that Main Streets are the heart of a town. We want people to come to downtown and we want people to say, oh, this is like a wonderful community and the people who live here are wonderful because they are. I was surprised at the number of people who participated from all sorts of age ranges. People were so excited about it. You know, that's what I thought was so much fun. When I shared it on my social media, they were like, we want to come to Bowman and do that too. I'd like to do it again. But if I did it again, I would try to find a place where people could come and have their picture taken with the piece. Because I would like to have a library of smiling people on Main Street.